Hey everybody, Reef Girl here and welcome to my channel. This video is an update about the events of August the 8th where eight of my 13 fish died suddenly. I'm pretty sure I've now figured out the cause and it would never have happened if I had not become complacent. So I'm gonna go through a few things that happened in the days leading up to August 8th. They were simple little things, but I think combined they created the perfect storm. See what you think. So while I talk about all of that, I'm showing you some close-ups of some of the corals. They're actually doing really well. The parameters were never really an issue in this tank. And that's one of the things that made it really hard to figure out what exactly happened. Then once I've shown you what I think led to the problem, I'll talk about some changes that I've made so that hopefully this never will happen again. Something to keep in mind is that this is a temporary setup. Back in February, I started cycling this 90 gallon tank so that in May and June, I could move the entire contents of my Red Sea XL425 into this tank temporarily. I really did not want to tear down and dispose of all of the livestock that I had grown over the past three years. So all of this will go into the new build when we move into the new house, which will be at the end of the year. Being a temporary setup, there were difficulties to overcome. So I've done things, changed things, added things based on decisions made when problems came along that needed to be solved. So what I've ended up with here is kind of a, a cobbled together setup that works, but maybe only barely. And it's not at my house. For the last three and a half months, it's been at my daughter's house 45 minutes away. So three things happened. The first is that a power head got bumped so it no longer agitated the surface. The second was that the skimmer had been off for several days, probably at least three. It had been constantly overflowing and so I took it offline intending to get back and mess around with the air intake to try and get it adjusted. That never happened. The third event was a 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit increase in the temperature. This is a small room with no windows and poor air circulation and although the temperature may not have been a huge factor, I believe it had some impact in driving down the levels of oxygen in the tank. So those three things taken together were enough, I believe, to drive down the level of oxygen in the water to the point where the fish could not survive. That this could happen never occurred to me and the results were catastrophic. In the three weeks since that happened, the tank has bounced back really well. I immediately made changes to address the three problems. I properly oriented the power head at the right hand end of the tank that had gotten bumped and I also reoriented the left hand power head to create even more surface agitation. I replaced the skimmer pump with a new MaxiJet 1200, cleaned it all up and got it running again. It is absolutely silent now. That pump was a problem, even if it wasn't the voltage that was the issue. So now it is running really, really well, and I'm sure it's gonna contribute in a positive way to oxygen levels in the tank once again. To improve air circulation in this room, we are now leaving the door fully open where before I had been pulling it partially shut to keep the dog out. The remaining five fish are all doing well. To start off with, the Aurora Gobi is doing fine. He comes out and eats, and I'm quite satisfied that he's healthy. The three mollies are doing great, constantly grazing on the algae, and the green grass is just fine. I went ahead and added a lawnmower blenny from Candy Corals, a source that I trust that has pre-treated fish. There's a lot of algae for him to eat. I seriously underestimated the job done by the large herbivores I lost, the fox face and the tomini tang. The blenny has already started picking away at what's on the rocks here. One or two people commented that I should get a sea urchin, so I did. I got this blue tuxedo urchin and he has already been working hard, as you can see from the white areas on the rock. In the days since I took this footage, I have seen him in several different places, and behind him he always leaves clean rocks. 
As for the Acropora, you can probably see there are some areas that still have live tissue. The rest of the skeletons have a lot of algae. I will be adding one more herbivore in here. In fact, as of this recording, it's already in here, but that's for a future video. And hopefully between the urchin, the blenny, and the new fish, this will all get cleaned up. I can only wait and see. I'm sure by now you've noticed there's considerable haze in the water. To help with that, I've temporarily installed the green machine. It has a three watt UV bulb, but it is not a UV sterilizer. It's more of a water clarifier. Every time I use it on a tank with cloudy water, it helps clear it up really quickly. It also contributes to the flow in here, even if it's just in a small way. So I'll leave it on here for a week or so and see if it helps clear up the haze in this water. Just a day or so before all this happened, I ordered a coral online and had it held for pickup because I had a couple other things to get at the same time. This is it. It's an Astriopora and I absolutely love the colors and the color pattern on here. I'll finish this update with wise cam footage taken today. The tank is looking pretty darn good at this point. You can see the fish are active, moving around. I'm not sure you'll actually see any of the new fish, the lawnmower blenny or the flame hawkfish, but they're there, they're working. Well, <laughs> the hawkfish doesn't work. His job is to be entertaining. Something else I learned from all of this is how truly supportive our reef keeping community is. And that this kind of thing has happened to a lot of you. Thank you to everyone who watched, told me your stories, commiserated, had ideas, had thoughts about what might have gone wrong. I really appreciated hearing from each and every one of you. I can't say thank you enough to everyone who offered their insights into the possibility of oxygen depletion in the water. The signs, the symptoms in fish, what to look for, and how it happens. With your help, I've come to that conclusion. I'm now satisfied in my own mind that that was the problem. A drop in oxygen, and the sad thing is, it probably happened over the course of at least a day. And if I had been around or paying attention or realized it could happen, I might have been able to prevent it. Lesson learned.